men nowadays watch Netflix and drink a soy latte. So no, that doesn't require testosterone. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, let's talk about testosterone and the lack thereof. Guys, it is quite interesting. I'm 34 years old now, which means I was born in 1987. And since 1987, testosterone levels have been plummeting 1% each year. Coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, 1% each year equates to 34% less testosterone in the average male nowadays. I'm not talking about men in their 40s, 50s or 60s. No, men in general. Healthy young males have 34% less testosterone than your average guy in the 80s and that is really really shocking so in today's video we're going to talk about why that is what is the reason behind it is it the soy boy agenda do they want to turn us gay into transvestites what is really happening there and then we're going to talk about ways to battle low testosterone naturally but chemically as well let's do it it's showtime <laughs> All right, before we talk about low testosterone, first we have to establish what normal testosterone means. Normal testosterone depends in which time you live. Because if you look back into the 80s, you will see that the normal reference range of testosterone was somewhere between 600 and 1,500 nanograms per deciliter. Then the scientist decided to drop that value to 500 to roughly 1200 nanograms per deciliter and nowadays you guessed it they dropped it again and now we find ourselves in a normal range from 280 nanograms to a thousand nanograms only so yet again we have to ask ourselves why is that so is that some sort of agenda why do they keep on dropping those numbers? Do they want to feminize us? Well, guys, this is not so conspiratorial after all, because the normal reference range is measured by the norm. And the norm in the society is lower testosterone levels. So that means if everybody would have zero testosterone, then that would be the normal reference range. This is how science operates. The norm is established by the people. At the moment, we have lower testosterone levels than in the 80s. So therefore, the normal reference range is 280 to 1000. So now, needless to say, a guy with 280 nanograms of testosterone, measly 280 nanograms of testosterone, won't feel healthy. But if you go to the doctor, they will send you back home. And they will tell you everything is A-OK. -okay. 280 nanograms back in in the day would be diagnosed with low testosterone. Nowadays, in Germany, for example, you wouldn't get a prescription for testosterone. Everything is fine, even though that is an equivalent of a 60 or 70 year old male. So now let's tackle the question why we do have low testosterone. Is it due to the microplastics? Is it due to the soy? <laughs> Yes, all of that definitely plays a role. Radiation, 5G, etc., etc. But more than anything else, guys, testosterone is a reactive hormone. Not many people know that nowadays. It acts similar to vitamin D. Vitamin D is a pro-hormone that gets secreted by your body when you get in touch with sunlight. Your skin gets exposed to sunlight. Your body starts producing vitamin D as a reaction. No, you don't absorb vitamin D from the sun. Many people still believe that, hmm, I'm getting my vitamin D from the sun. No, you're getting it from yourself. Your body produces it when it has a reason to produce it. And the same applies to testosterone. When you don't give your body a reason to produce testosterone, your body won't produce any testosterone. It's very, very simple. So if you're not sexually active, your body has no reason to produce testosterone. If you're not involved in high-risk situations, then your body won't produce testosterone. Men back in the day used to go to war. They used to hunt and that requires testosterone. 
men nowadays watch Netflix and drink a soy latte. So no, that doesn't require testosterone. So now, is it all bad? It depends. In nature, high testosterone levels mean you are the alpha male. The alpha male in nature has to fight, has to establish dominance, gets the women, has to fight for the women. So it is pretty risky to be an alpha male. Historically, many alpha males have died. Therefore, from a survival principle, being a beta male is not too bad after all. Because if you have lower testosterone, you are involved in less risky behavior and less risky behavior leads to better survival outcomes. You're less likely to die. If you have less testosterone, you're going to be less horny. You're going to approach less women, less to none in the end. So now you have better survival chances again because you don't have to fight for your woman. You don't have to protect your woman. You don't have to protect your children. You are safe. On top of that, if you have low testosterone levels, you probably have high estrogen levels. With higher estrogen levels, you have higher fat reserves. If you have low testosterone, you're probably a very, very bad hunter and you don't get to eat that much. But hey, don't you worry. As I said, you have higher fat levels <laughs> and therefore you can survive way, way better than a guy that has high testosterone and needs to hunt all the time. So there you go. It is a double-edged sword. It is pretty cool to be the alpha male, but the question is, are you laid out to be the alpha male? Are you supposed to be the alpha male? Are you willing to do what it takes to be the alpha male? male. So now in this day and age, it looks slightly different. You don't have to fight for your territory anymore. You're docile. You probably got your girl over Tinder. You don't have to worry about much, but still, now you have the low testosterone. You have the unfavorable body. What are you supposed to do? So let's get into how to tackle low testosterone. First and foremost, as I said, it is a reactive hormone and therefore it would be smart to engage in certain behavior that could then lead to secretion of testosterone, such as heavy weightlifting, martial arts and other risky sports, parachuting, bungee jumping and whatnot, which lowers your life expectancy again, because it is very, very risky after all, but that could lead to more secretion of testosterone. Another big factor, of course, is nutrition. A lot of saturated fats, preformed cholesterol that can lead to higher testosterone levels. Red meat. Toxic masculinity gets triggered through red meat. We heard in certain studies. Then you can go down the herbal route. You have Tribulus terrestris, you have Tongat Ali, you have fenugreek seed and many more herbs that can help with testosterone production. If the herbs don't do the trick, you can supplement with zinc or with boron. Those minerals can help as well. What if all of that fails? Well, then you need to go down the chemical route. But before you do TRT, there are certain chemicals that can induce higher testosterone production within your body, such as clomiphene citrate and HCG. Those are substances that can force your body to produce more testosterone. It is definitely worth looking into. That being said, guys, if you're 20 and you're listening to this video, you're healthy, you have no health condition, this doesn't affect you. This isn't for you. You don't have to worry about any of this. This is for the boomers, like Boomer Bobby here. This is for guys over 30, over 40. Because all of those measures, if you eat healthy, you supplement a little, you work out, you should be fine as a 20 year old. However, when you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, etc., you reach a point of diminishing returns. What should you do? Take care of your sleep hygiene, proper sport, proper nutrition, proper sexual activity, proper this, proper that. And in the end, you might increase your testosterone levels for a hundred nanograms. Most people nowadays in their 30s and 40s, unfortunately, won't have stable and sufficient testosterone in their bodies. In those cases, testosterone augmentation, TRT, is the last route. 
However, it is something that you have to think about really, really carefully because testosterone replacement therapy is for life. Once you get on it in your 30s, 40s, 50s, you won't bounce back. It is highly unlikely that you will bounce back to the same level of testosterone that you produced prior to TRT. Even though it was already a low level, if you are on TRT, your body will shut down and after that won't produce as much. So you have to ask yourself the question, is it worth living like this with the lower levels, but I don't have to take care about injecting myself or whatnot. Or you say, I can't live like this. My life quality is diminished. I simply can't get stuff done. Chronically fatigued, chronically weak, depressed, etc., etc. You do not produce enough testosterone, so you will have to do something about it. As always, this is not a recommendation. It is simply a topic that is of high interest to me as a dad who is almost 35 years old now. TRT, etc. becomes a topic of interest. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section what you think and write down how old you are because I want to see which thoughts are linked to which age group. That will be interesting for me to see. All right, guys, but this is it. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.